This is amazing. Now we are going to see about vector shift data collector. In this, we are going to create an AI chatbot using vector shift and all the key information will get stored in a database using data collector. So we can focus on the key information rather than the whole conversation. So when you see a manual chatbot, you need to write all the logics behind it to collect the data. Then based on the data, we need to filter those information. Then you might need more settings for further conversation. Let's take an example. When you take this example, when the user say hi, then if you're doing a manual chatbot, we need to check what message has been received. And based on that, we need to configure to ask for the name. Then the user is going to respond with the name. Then that need to get stored in the database. Then a conditional logic will be written in the code to ask for email address. Then the user is going to respond with an email address. Then again, a difficult logic or coding is required to check the email format, whether it's a legitimate email or not. Then based on that, then further settings required for further conversation. So creating a chatbot manually is really tedious, but using vector shift, you are able to create a chatbot without any code. And with the power of AI, all the logics and filtering is taken care of. So when you take AI chatbot, we give a general guidance, then it can automatically filter the output. For example, it can detect an email address. It can check for names and save it in the database accordingly. Next, it can auto continue the conversation without us fine tuning further. So when you take this, the chatbot can automatically check for the incoming message. Based on that, it can ask for a name. Then it can ask for email address. Considering both are given, it can automatically redirect to the next message. That is how can I help? And you can create this setup very easily. And here is my website. Let's say hi. And it's asking, what is your name? I'm going to say Mervin Prazen. Next, it's asking, what is your email address? Test at gmail.com. Just a random email address. Then it says, how can I help? Now I can ask, tell me about Mervin Prazen because I ingested all the data from my website into this chatbot. So based on that information, here I got the response. Now, considering the information provided, that is the key information, your name and email address. If I go and see the collected data, there I am able to see the information. Those are the key information which I just sent and it got automatically saved in the database, which I can see from the back end of vector shift. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about vector shift data collector. In this, I'll show you how you can upload your data in the storage. Next, how to create a pipeline so you can create a chatbot like this, as I've shown before. And finally, I can show you how you can publish it on your own website like this. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. Thanks to Vectorship for sponsoring this video. So Vectorshift is a no-code AI automation platform where you can create pipelines, integrate that with various other applications, create a chatbot, create workflow automation, and much more. You can get started for free. And if you want to upgrade, just type Mervin Prazen coupon code to get 20% off. Now, once after you sign up, you have marketplace on the left-hand side. So click on that. You have multiple templates, which you can use to start your pipeline. So in my case, I've already created a pipeline. So the logic is same, same as I explained before. The user is going to initiate the chat. So as you can see here, the first step is the user is asking a question or a message. So you can see in this image, the user is first initiating the chat at the top. Then that information need to be understood by the chat bot. We're going to use GPT-40. So considering no name is being previously provided, we are going to ask for the name. So in this, we have three key components. One is knowledge base that contains all the data from my website. Then the second component is data collector. So you can create a data collector from the chat tab. There you have data collector. There you can click the settings and instead of auto generate questions, I'm going to manually give those fields. So I'm going to untick this. So there I'm providing these two fields. One is the name field and email field. Name is the name of the user, email of the user. And I'm providing some example. I can even add more fields if I want to. But in my case, I'm going to stick with two. That is the name and email. So the third important component is chat memory so that the large language model can understand the previous conversation. So overall, if you see, 
when the user initiates the chat, it goes through three components. One is knowledge reader, that is knowledge base reader, then data collector and chat memory. So knowledge base reader will gather any information based on the user's query. The data collector will store all key information. In our case, it's name and email address. A chat memory will store all the previous conversation. So when the LLM respond, it knows the context. So these three data or information are passed to the large language model, as you can see here. So the question is the main user's question. Then the context is from the knowledge base. The data collected is from the data collected component together with the history, that is the chat history. So three components plus one user's question. All four things are going inside the large language model. If you want to learn step by step, I've already covered beginner's tutorial in regards to vector shift, which I will link that in the description below. So in this, all this information is sent to the large language model. In our case, that is going to be the chatbot. So the key thing in here is the system message. So rather than doing a lot of configuration, we are doing only one thing that is system prompt here compared to a manual chatbot. In AI, system prompt is the key area for settings. So this is the message which we are going to give. You are a customer support bot for Mervin Prison, a YouTube channel for AI technologies. You will receive collected data, which will contain name and email address. If there is no name, ask what is your name. If name is present, but there is no email, ask what is your email. If you have both, proceed with the following instruction. If how can I help has not appeared in conversation history, respond with how can I help. So that is the first message. If how can I help has appeared in conversation history and you have received both name and email in collected data, answer the question based on the context. If you are unable to answer question based on the context, respond with, I am unable to answer the question. That's it. Just this one information and all the logic behind this is taken care of. As simple as that to create an AI chatbot and that output is sent as a response. So a simple logical diagram, as you can see here, just only three key components together with the chatbot. That is the large language model. We are using GPT-40. So one thing I need to tell you how to ingest your own data in this. So I mentioned about knowledge base reader. So if you click the drop down, so these are the various knowledge data which I've created previously. So if you go back to the main dashboard, there you will have storage. There you can create a new storage new create knowledge base. I'm going to mention as Mervin present data and an example description and click confirm. Here at the top, I'm going to add documents. So there are different types of documents are here. Your file, integration URL, recursive URL, Wikipedia, YouTube, archive and Git. So in my case, I'm going to use recursive URL. So just by mentioning my website name, HTTPS, MEA.VIN and then add it's going to scroll through the whole website and add all the content to this knowledge base. Similarly, I'm going to add URL, that is YouTube URL. So by mentioning the YouTube URL, all the data from that URL is stored in this knowledge base. So when you come back to the pipeline, even in the drop down, you can see Mervin present data. So that contains all the data from my website and the URLs of the YouTube which I provided. Now, considering we have all ready to publish this at the top, go and click deploy changes. Next, go to the deploy as icon and click chatbot. There I'm going to mention as Mervin present chatbot. Same in the description and click save. Next, going to export. There I can directly open as a chatbot like this with a UI or I can even publish this on my own website. So to publish on my own website, you have embed in website. So I'm going to copy the code here. This is my WordPress backend. So going to appearance, editor, templates, single post and footer. That's where I put my HTML code and click save. Now I can view the site and you have the chatbot ready published. To test it, I can just type hi. Then it's asking what is your name? Entering Mervin Prison. What is the email address? Test at gmail.com. How can I help? So now you can ask questions from all the data from my website. So if you want to see the data collected, come back to dashboards and then click chatbots. There, click the edit button of the chatbot which you have just created. Then go to manager here. There you can see the collected data. Click on that 
and there you should be able to see the data which got collected. This is exciting. Now this simplifies the process of automatically collecting key information from an AI chatbot. There is one more thing which I want to show you, which is if you go to your storage and knowledge base, there if you add document, there's one more option that is integration. So click on integration and here you'll be able to integrate with multiple application, which means you are able to add knowledge from any of these applications, such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Drive, Airtable, Notion, OneDrive, and much more. In this way, rather than relying on a one source of information, you can create a knowledge base so that the chatbot will have advanced knowledge or more information to respond to user's query more accurately. Now you are able to create a chatbot like this and collect all the key information and provide a better customer service. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.